I just want to say from the beginning, can you please leave a comment at the end of this video? With the recent disappointment of being dropped by Spotify, something which we're told you're distraught about, Megan, there are concerns that you might struggle for money in the future. And although many have claimed that you are a long way from poor, so it's not something you'll have to face anytime soon, you have discovered categorically that churning out quality content on demand is not something that you are skilled enough for. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on money in general? And what is your relationship with money? Well, I'm very glad you asked that question, Cobalt, because money, or moolah, is very close to our hearts, you know. Yeah, that's why we started up a charity, because we're always trying to raise some dosh. We are very, very passionate about money. You know, very passionate, you know. In fact, I would say it was in the top echelon of things that were most important to me, important to, to Harry and I, but mainly me. Uh, you know, I, I would say that, you know, it's alongside, but maybe just a little bit below, something like, you know, enforced equity and, and social justice programs. You know, it's not as important as that. But it's a little bit higher than, say, you know, love and family. The great thing about money is that you can spend it, you know, in exchange for desired goods and services. Well, thank you, John Maynard Keynes. But let's just for a moment dig into your relationship with money. I mean, do you see yourself as having a healthy one? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. You know, I have a deep admiration and respect for money. It's a genuine affection. Well, sometimes the love of money is the opposite to having a healthy relationship with it. I mean, would you say it had power over you? A power that could make you do things that were principally and morally, you know, vulgar? I would describe myself as a money realist, right? You know, I, it's, I don't worship money, but, you know, I'm, I'm not oblivious to its evident power. You know, it's like, it's got the power to feed children, you know, grow food, build houses you know, prevent climate disasters. And it's got the power to turn otherwise unattractive men into real hunks. Huh? Yeah, you know, you've got to acknowledge money and, you know, huddle near it for warmth, you know? Oh, that reminds me, how is Mr. Getty? Oh, well, you know, what can I say? I mean, his breath gets shallower each time I see him, you know, and, and that's exciting news. Uh, we have a question here from uh, Irene Polystyrene, who's looking for a job if anyone's hiring. She asks, do you have any other hobbies besides sanctimonious behaviour? Oh, no, no, it's uh, sanctimony mainly. No, Harry. Uh, I mean, I personally love, you know, yoga and, uh, and self-reflection, you know, general self-reflection. Self-reflection? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm an interesting person. Um, I don't have hobbies like bowling or horseback riding or golf. I'm pretty good at golf. I once beat Tiger Woods. Really? Yeah, I scored 160 odd and he only scored like 71. You're yeah, not quite sure you've got to grips with the scoring system there, Harry. Anyway, back to me. Well, of course. Your half-brother, Megan, Thomas Markle, is about to make an appearance on Australian Big Brother. Is this a foreboding moment for you, considering some of the damning things he's had to say about you in the past? What do you mean? I don't remember him saying any negative comments. Uh, he's referred to you, Megan, as a phony, a bully, a jaded, shallow and conceited woman. And he's reported to have warned you, Harry, and I quote, that she'll ruin your life. Oh, those ones, yeah. Ooh, yeah, bad. Uh, have you ever heard of antimatter? Uh, yes, although not in the context of Australian Big Brother. When someone comes along who's more, you know, magnetically or, or um, maybe uh, spiritually connected, you know, connected to the surroundings, uh, there is always um, some ignorance born alongside. Oh, I see what she's getting at. Oh, clever. I mean, some of my family must be viewed in that light, right? And although they are my family, of course, you know, I love them all dearly. Um, but the best way to show them that is to completely cut them out of my life. It's all part of Markle's law. But I think they've decided not to publish because there was nothing to publish. <laughs> 
We've been fully vaccinated. Oh, do you mean vindicated? Uh, possibly. But we've also been fully vaccinated. Fully. That we have been vindicated, you know, and I think it's further proof that they had it out for me from the beginning. You know, they were prepared to perpetuate falsehoods just so they could injure my good name. I don't ask what's in it. I don't ask what number booster it is. I just roll up my sleeve, get my shot, get a stamp on my card and go and collect my free Krispy Kreme donut. Uh, no, Harry, we're on our vindication at the moment from the palace bullying probe that turned out to be a nothing burger that you know, we always knew it would be. And like I said, uh, archetype is a you know, perfect word because it's very similar to Archie and Archwell. Yes, Megan, but are you not worried, uh, as one of our listeners wrote in to suggest, that by clearly not understanding the very word that you've named your podcast, that you'll be accused of pseudo-intellectual claptrap? An accusation, she claims, is bolstered by the whiny, platitudinal bilge that formed the content of the show. Oh, no, I'm not concerned, but, you know, I have no doubt that accusations like this are going to be thrown towards me because, hey, you know, that's one of the themes of the podcast, that, you know, the assumption that a woman of color like me won't have anything of interest or anything intellectual to say, okay, fair enough. But, you know, when you get archetyped this way, stereotypes, tomato, tomato, uh, not really, Harry. You know that only brave and ambitious women of substance are going to be able to uproot these negative archetypes, uh, stereotypes, like trees from a forest of anchors, creating a softer and more individualized network, you know, free from archetypal thought, uh, which will allow you know, femininity to break through the shell that it's been kept in and show itself to be more than it currently is and all the good it could do. My Megan is accused of lots of things, you know, scheming, manipulation, and the use of LCS. LCS? Uh, long, convoluted sentences that don't go anywhere or mean anything. When all I really do is try to embrace the feminine motif and reconfigure it into a positive force for the spiritual and mental health uh, of minorities. I'm so glad I didn't understand a word of that. Because if I did, I'd probably be in tears. Uh, I'm with Harry not understanding a word of that, Megan. And from it, we learned a little more about your self-entitled and petulant outlook and how you were prioritizing your mental health by distancing yourself from toxicity. And most dauntingly, predicting, and I quote, an era of visibility this autumn with a more intentionally public life. Uh, we had no direct influence on the book, right? However. Yes, uh, that's completely true. Uh, like I've said previously, I found more time to concentrate on my mental health by freeing up some of the other time that I wasted being happy. Uh, Tom Bauer believes that you two are still up to no good and like mischievous scamps are planning to pull a stunt just before the coronation. They're so suspicious. I mean, suspicion, suspicion. <gasps> Such as? No. We've certainly got nothing planned. Have we, Megan? No, H, no, nothing at all. Well, he has suggested, and he's not the only one, that you might decide to pull out of the coronation last minute. I mean, you've already insulted the affair by promising to leave merely a couple of hours later so you can return home to Archie's birthday, a private jet, I assume. You know me too well. But you're confirming that there's absolutely no truth in this. None whatsoever, Cobalt. Uh, got my invitation here. Uh, you've been formally invited to attend, uh, rada, 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 etc., etc. Uh, reserve the seat on row Q. Q? <laughs> Q? Yeah. 
That's not the best, is it? Oh, no, don't worry, look. It's got an asterisk next to it, which means it's special. So special, that's good. Yeah, right, asterisk, hold on. What does one asterisk mean? Let, let me go and consult the key. And, uh, yeah, okay. What does restricted viewing mean? Well, it probably means you're sitting behind a stone pillar or something. Yeah. This feels like I'm going to be sitting with the lower royals or something. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, the lower royals won't be sitting any farther back than E or F. You mean I'll be sitting next to Giles Brandreth? Oh, no, no. Nowhere near Giles. You'll be sitting next to James Corden. <laughs> you know, I am so sad I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. Megan. 30 years on and you're back on your campaign to end sexist stereotypes in advertising. Yeah, you know, nothing upsets me more, right, than women washing up and men mowing the lawn. Uh, why? Because it indoctrinates people into believing that it's the correct way of thinking. It, it does. Well done, Harry. You famously petitioned Procter and Gamble about something very similar uh, 30 odd years ago. Born fighter, my Meg. You know, she was born with big ideas and a big heart. I was. Nicely put, Harry. You know, one of the biggest, like, you know, systemic problems we have is the, you know, easy acceptance of these gender roles, you know, these gender stereotypes. And, like, when I was thinking about the situation, you know, I was thinking deeply, deeply about the situation, and it, I said, it came to me in a, f a flash of inspiration, right? That it's the little things. It's the little things, right? The tiny weeny things, Cobalt. The little things, you know, that you see in, in like advertisements, right? In adverts, you know, and the young people, children. No, no, that's offensive, Cobalt. It's young people who are nourished by chest feeders, who are brought into the world by birthing people. It certainly is the little things, you know, a, a tweak of language here, the outlawing of an expression there, and we end up mutilating children. Uh, the mysterious older woman who wrestled your virginity from you back in 2001, Harry, has finally been revealed. Has it? Yes, uh, digger driver Sasha Warpole, who stunned the world by coming forward to show receipts and accept responsibility. Yes, but she didn't have to do it in such a public way, did she? I mean, she even released the story in the Daily Mail, the very paper that my Megan sued. So, sorry, sorry, I haven't seen this story. Uh, Sasha who? And, and how did you read it before me? I've got a mail online subscription, you know, no ads. Well, delete it immediately. Why? Give me the phone. Give me the phone. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, and as I was saying, it does seem like the crassest of ironies that she would release, you know, this salacious story, you know, and only for money, I bet. <laughs> You'd know all about that. To the Daily Mail? You know, a woman coming forward to admit to seducing, like, a, a young handsome prince, you know, and to the Daily Mail of all papers. I mean, that's got to be like the sickest aspect of this whole thing. Perhaps it is, Megan. Although I must tell you what the most hilarious aspect of all this is. Now, this older woman, this uh, cougar on the prowl for young flesh, or young stallion as Harry, Harry might put it, is actually uh, one year younger than your stated age. Yeah, well, she seemed like an older woman at the time, you know. You've got to remember, I was only 17. I learned the truth at 17, that love was just for beauty queens. Why do you mean my stated age? No, hey, sorry. Um, that was the video. And if you liked it, uh, press the like button. If you want to share it, uh, press the share button. If you want to be notified to further videos, um, press the notification bell. And if you subscribe to the channel and the message, then subscribe to the channel and the message by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you.